Hello, my name is Rainer Eudikus, and I'm the principal cellist of the Utah Symphony. The decision to play the cello was very skillfully planted in my brain at a young age. My mom is a musician, she's a professional clarinetist. So when I was six years old, a cello was put in my hands and yo-yo ma CDs were put in the car, and here I am. I always pretty much went along with it, at least in the early years. Um, I enjoyed it, music was fun, and I had been exposed to recordings and live performances from a really early age, even before I was playing. So for me, it was just a natural continuation of what I had always been surrounded by. My education as a whole included everything from private lessons, public school orchestra programs, youth orchestras outside of the schools, summer festivals, pretty much everything you can think of, public universities, private conservatories. I've kind of done it all. It would be hard to, to just isolate one or two teachers that had the most influence on me because I had five teachers that I would count as my real main influences. This cello, I wake up every day thankful to have access to it. Um, I first laid eyes and hands on it when I was 14, and I had always just had it in the back of my mind, like, I have to have this instrument. Um, and then at one point during my, my grad school studies, I was taking auditions pretty regularly and getting pretty far, but never landing the job. Um, I still had a lot to learn, but my, my teacher at the time asked me if I had access to a better instrument. And uh, I called home, and within three weeks I had it in my hands, and within a couple years I started winning. Yeah, I love this instrument. I, I call it Brownie. That's the official nickname. Um, it's sort of a mystery as to what it actually is, as far as who made it and where it came from. The general consensus seems to be that it's probably from Venice, or at least in the style of makers from Venice. Um, around mid-18th century, probably 1760, something like that. So I don't anticipate ever needing another one because I'm still learning how to go further and deeper with, with this cello. If I had to choose one word, and it's hard because the cello is, is very multifaceted uh, in, the, in the orchestra, I would probably say that we are the main body of the string section. You have you have the violins that get most of the attention. You have the basses, obviously, filling in the, the bass fundamental role. You have the violas that kind of supplement both, depending on what they're doing, and we kind of fit in to fill in the rest. I mean, sometimes we'll have the melody. Often we do have really big, important parts, but sometimes we also share a role with the bass section or the viola section. Uh, it's pretty diverse, and we have to be very flexible at all times. One effect that cellists and any, any string player often has to use is, is called tremolo, which basically is just a really fast back and forth, usually pretty far out in the bow, um, and it has a really special effect when everyone is doing it together, but this is basically what it sounds like. Another effect that is sort of spooky in nature is called ponticello, which translates to playing really close to the bridge, which is this bit here. Um, and when you play here, the string is more constricted and doesn't vibrate as freely, and it results in this really steely, pretty unique sound that's like this. This rubber thing here on the strings is a mute. Basically, every instrument in the orchestra has a mute of some kind. Um, and ours slides on top of the bridge like this. And what it does is it clamps on and dampens any vibration, not any, but more of the vibration from the strings. And so it, as you would expect, mutes the sound. And different mutes will be more 
extreme in their dampening effect. This one's a little more subtle, but I think you'll still be able to hear it. I've found through my life, through school, whenever I've had to try to explain music or my relationship with music in words, it's really difficult. Um, and usually when you answer it, it comes out sounding like some kind of canned, cheesy response. But for me, it's just, it's a way to express and relate both for the sake of the audience and for myself, to be completely honest. Um, just to express certain tangible, emotional, feelings that you just cannot express in words. It's when, we, when you play a symphony, sometimes it'll be a programmatic work, which means there is a story going along with it. Um, but more often than not, there, there is nothing concrete that you're saying. It's more just this fluid sort of stream of consciousness. I mean, when you think about what we do, it's just I drag hair across a string and it vibrates and it vibrates the air around you and then it makes contact with your ears and your brain processes it into something real and solid. And that to me is just, when you think about it, that's just, it's basically like magic. Uh, and to basically be a magician every week and to play with other really talented magicians, musicians with the Utah Symphony is a privilege. So I'm gonna play the opening of a movement from Saint-Saëns' The Carnival of the Animals, uh, and this one is called The Swan. It's one of the most famous cello pieces in existence, and with good reason. So. And normally there would be, you know, piano or harp or something, but use your imagination. Mm -hmm. 